Welcome to Flash Fiction from Giant's Reach by Steve Cook. Hey everyone, welcome back. First of all, I'm sorry there wasn't a podcast last week. I've had the uh, eternal cold that seems to hover around all primary schools. Um, You can probably hear my voice is still a little rough. Highly recommend you go check it out. It's a really interesting one, so uh, yeah, enjoy this second part. Oh, and hey, one more thing. If you're listening to this and thinking, my goodness, I've got a friend who'd really enjoy this, then why not recommend me to them? Uh, This sort of thing only grows through word of mouth, so uh, thank you for listening and thank you in advance for recommending me to someone else. The Lighthouse, Part 2 The lighthouse was deserted. From room to room, Moore and Bethany crept, disturbing nothing but a thin layer of dust on the bare floorboards. The lower floor was just secure storage, untouched crates of pickled food in clear glass jars, barrels of water, packets of dry biscuits, and even a small box of tin cans. Moore took one out and turned it round in his hands. The Guild of Engineers mark embossed on the top was still sharp and firm and he whistled. Here, Beth, check this out. She looked up from her own inspection and held her hands out for him to toss it to her. Guess someone made a pretty penny. I'd heard of these, but didn't think I'd see one for months. She nodded. Planning for the future, like. At least one of them was. Hmm, top floor. Go see if the light works. We need to get this place back up and running, if nothing else. He accepted the can back from Bethany and followed her up the stairs to the middle floor. Immediately, his nose twitched as the sweet scent of rot reached them. Beth caught it too, and her expression said it all. You go and look. She vanished upstairs, continuing round the bend. Few personal touches lay around to show that it had been occupied. The men would only be there for a six-month rotation, and few of them wanted to risk losing or breaking something precious. The lighthouse was solid enough, but the journeys to and fro were fraught with danger. A couple of comfortable chairs sat around a table that stood on a decorative rug on the floor, and here the first oddities appeared. Cups were laid out on the low table, their contents evaporated to a grimy sludge in the bottom. Stepping gingerly around the chairs, Moore moved into the kitchenette. He stopped short. Beth! The sound of footsteps rattled upstairs, an exasperated sigh, and then she called down, What's up? Come and see this. She came back down, more cautiously this time, and joined him at the threshold of the little cooking and dining area. What in God's name? The table was laid. Cutlery even, wooden forks next to plates. There was bread in the centre, a large loaf with a couple of hunks taken out of it, and a metal platter on which sat the remains of a piece of roasted meat. Mould was growing over its surface, white and furry. The bread was hard as a rock. Butter, long melted to a gelid puddle, sat on a plate. Here, then, was the source of the smell of rot. One chair was overturned, the only sign of a rushed departure. Otherwise, the table was orderly. It's like they left suddenly, Beth murmured. But where did they go? I don't know, Moore said, not daring to raise his voice either. The silence in the lighthouse seemed to have taken on a sepulchral air, heavy and redolent with dust. Nowhere good. The search of the remainder of the lighthouse took little time. The light at the top was in good working order, complete with oil in the reservoir. Moore started it, wound the clockwork, and left it turning. It would work for over an hour without needing winding, and even though it was still daylight, the sight of the warm glow would buoy spirits, or at least, so he hoped. 
Bethany dug the logbook out from the top floor, but a cursory glance revealed the last entry from a week before. The storm, noted and marked, and then nothing. She flicked back through it idly, then closed it. Liam was waiting for them outside. Nothing, the otter said. Checked everywhere. Can't smell them, can't see them. If they're out there, they left days ago and haven't moved since. It makes no sense, Moore said. He looked all around the island. From this angle it was almost beautiful. Green grass, a rolling hilltop, and the sudden drop to the sea below. I expected to find... something. Dead bodies would be a relief at this point, or signs of a fight. A note. A reason. At least then we'd know what happened to them. But this... His voice tailed off, but the others simply stared at him, and then the three of them quietly turned to look up at the lighthouse. It towered, seeming to bend slightly over them, so close were they. No movement could be seen at any of its windows, no sign of life beyond their own three souls. The glass and metal housing at the top was like an eye, unblinking, its gaze flashing rhythmically over them, its secrets buried deep within. You've been listening to Flash Fiction written for my Patreon, Giant's Reach. If you'd like to become a supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Giant's Reach, where you can find more fiction just like this, 